Okay, here we are. This is what happened. I did this peel yesterday and I realized that I needed to humble myself. I am doing a 30% glycolic acid peel and when I went into this, why I'm redoing this is because I went into it, this is a beginner peel, no big deal. I forgot the fundamental basics. Every peel is a peel. They're all professional grade peels. I didn't think it was very socially responsible for me to put out that video and I need a refresher on the basics. So I thought in this video I am going to break it down each step to make sure that you do a chemical peel safely at home. Your face is so important and the goal is to have better skin, not damage your skin. Here I am again. I'm not redoing the peel. I'm going to take the clips from my other video, but I'm going to break it down. We have 12 steps. That's it. You're going to get beautiful, healthy, safe chemical peel at home. So let's get into it. <laughs> All right, step one is that you want to make sure that you have all the products to complete the peel. The products that you need are, of course, your peel itself. I have my 30% peel here. You want to make sure that you have a neutralizer, either a baking soda and water combo, or you can purchase a neutralizer itself but if you don't want to buy the neutralizer completely understand everybody seems to have baking soda in their cupboard and so you can just mix baking soda and then just a cleaner water like if you have bottled water distilled water i don't recommend tap water but if that's all you have that's all you have and then i just make a, a solution which i'll talk more about in a little bit uh, you want to have gloves you want to have cotton rounds and thinner cotton pads. Those are, these are like essence pads. They're thinner so they don't absorb as much product. So you're not wasting product. But if you don't have these, you can use just the regular cotton rounds. But again, you're gonna soak up a lot more product. And a little dish to put it in. You need SPF, very, very, very important. A aloe vera gel. Uh, retinol cream you don't absolutely need this but during my video I do apply this so if you want you can but not totally necessary you want something to protect your eyebrows around your nose and your lips those areas are really sensitive and so any kind of petroleum jelly clear chapstick any kind of chapstick honestly chapstick Vaseline petroleum that's the same thing. Any kind of lubricant <laughs> you can apply to your eyebrows and the side of your nose and your lips just so you don't burn those areas. I did during one of my TCA peels, I had a drip and I didn't notice into my eyebrow. Thank God my eyebrow was there and it didn't go in my eye, but I got a chemical burn right above, right at the edge of my eyebrow and I'm able to cover it up with makeup. Um, it's not terrible. It's actually pretty small if you didn't know it was there you would never see it but still that's just an example of how the product and I'm experienced I've done this a thousand times that you do need to be safe all right so now that we know we have all of our products I'll list all the products down below actually I will list all of these steps and all of the products down below so you can just see a quick shot of them and then you can watch the video to see each step in its fruition so now that you know you have all your products now you want to stop all treatments, any retinols, any glycolics, any lactic acids, any salicylic acids, anything that you do for a treatment for your face, not moisturizer, you know, not those kinds of stuff, unless you have like a vitamin C or a retinol in your moisturizer. You just wanna make sure that you're avoiding any treatments a week prior to your peel. Do a patch test. If you've never done this peel before, do a patch test. Just take a little product on a Q-tip, 
not that it's soaking wet or anything like that just that it's enough just to apply I would do it under my chin just do a, a little swipe time it out 31 minute tops rinse it off and then check it just to make sure that there's no crazy redness bumps super irritation now you're gonna feel it it's gonna feel irritated it's gonna feel itchy it's gonna feel those but you're gonna really notice that your skin did not like it it's gonna be super scabby i would do it in a place that you couldn't see but close to your face but not on your face and only a small small spot just in case you have a reaction step four you want to make sure that you wash your face make sure your face is nice and clean prior to your chemical peel use a washcloth or your miracle cloth or anything just to make sure that you get don't exfoliate but just make sure that you get all of your skin nice and clean and it's dry so what i do is i wash my face and then i move on to making my neutralizer you want to make your neutralizer prior to applying the peel it's very important because it may take you longer to make the solution than how long you are going to keep the peel on your face itself when you first start you just want to make sure that you make your neutralizer prior to putting on the peel to make my neutral So I'm just gonna fill it up with water. I'm gonna fill it up with uh, just a bottled water. If you have distilled water, that's ideal. Tap water isn't recommended. I, I don't know where you live, how purified your water is, but the cleaner the water, the better. All right, water's in. I'm just gonna shake it up and get all the baking soda mixed in there. But you can, you can buy it if you want to. You don't have to but they do sell them. So if you don't wanna bother with making them. So now we have our neutralizer all ready to go. We are on our way, we got this. This peel is going to be amazing because we're following all the steps. <laughs> we got this. Step six, we want to apply an even layer. No pooling, no dripping. Make sure all your product is squeezed out of your cotton round and then apply a layer. You can concentrate in the areas that you want to. So you apply your layer and then you're like, I just really need it through here or I really need it through here, wherever that area is around my chin, I, I like to concentrate there. But blemishes, scratches, any wounds to the face, that sounds really weird, but if you have anything, you know, if you burned yourself with a curling iron or had any accidents or just blemishes that you've picked at or are healing, those areas you don't want to be, you don't want to concentrate on those areas. You're going to want to, you're like, oh, I want to get rid of this and you're going to want to go over it. Terrible idea. Hyperpigmentation, that's why. If once you put that product on there too heavy, it's going to scab really bad. That area is really sensitive. It's a wound. It's just not a good idea. So you can go over it, but don't concentrate on it and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this here. No, don't do it. Don't do it. You're gonna want to, but don't. No pooling, no dripping. Like again, I had that drip on my forehead and it burned the crap out of my eyebrow you do not have any drips that your cotton round is squeezed out not so it's dry but so you can feel that there's product there but it's not like if you held it up it's not going to drip out that was number seven watch out for blemishes step eight as soon as you have the peel applied and you set your cotton round your cotton pad down you want to set an alarm you want to be super safe if it's your first time 30 seconds to a minute, no more. <laughs> You're gonna want to, don't be a superhero. Please don't be a superhero. Don't leave it on longer than you need to. You're, you can redo this, no big deal. Every week you can do a 30% glycolic peel as long as you do it safely. And just know your skin, know how it feels, know what your tolerance is. But with your first one, you don't know what that is. Start out small, add a little bit each week. The max you wanna do is three minutes 
but your skin will tell you it will it will guide you it will be like mm, nope too much or oh wow this is intense or when you take off the peel you're like whoa my face is super red like just look for those warning signs and then each week just add more time you know add another 30 seconds first week do either 30 seconds to a minute second week do a minute 30 and then just go from there don't don't go from zero to a hundred it's it won't work in your benefit at all slow and steady wins the race number nine all right so now our timer has gone off it's time to go rinse this off we want to use our neutralizer because the neutralizer is going to stop the product from working it's not going to stop at a hundred percent your face is still active the product is still active after you use the neutralizer but when you first apply the neutralizer it's going to burn don't let that scare you or think that there's something wrong with your neutralizer it just that's just how it feels when you put the neutralizer on you're like ow it goes away don't worry and then you still feel it after you rinse your face you're still going to feel it but don't be concerned but so now we've rinsed what you want to do what i do is I apply the neutralizer in my hand, pat it on, I get my rag, I put some in here, because what I use is I use a squeeze bottle, but if you don't use a squeeze bottle, you can dip into your neutralizer, and then I just pat, pat my face, pat my face, and then I grab some water, rinse, you know, throw that on my face, and then I pat again. Do not scrub do not scrub not a good idea just pat good deal you got it you know what i'm talking about so that's number 10 is rinse your face and then pat dry number 11 you can skip if you don't want to well you can skip part of 11 not all of 11. i apply a retinol right after my peel because my pores are open the product is absorbed deeper into the skin i apply it you don't have to but you do need to make sure that you're washing your face daily after your peel with a, a sensitive light cleanser and then you also want to use a no perfume no treatment moisturizer as well so those are just some daily things that you want to do but right after a peel because right now we're still in the peel process you want to make sure that you put a retinol on or what i do is i put a retinol on and then i put a moisturizer on top of it honestly i put on an aloe vera I only do this the very first day. I do not apply this any more than just the first day right after the peel. It just soothes it, it calms it down, adds a little bit of a barrier. I, I like using the aloe vera, so, but if you don't wanna use aloe vera, then you can just go right on to your daily, and I use a marula oil. I put the oil on, let it soak in, and then I move on to step 12, which is very very important don't skip this step if you never wear SPF in your life no judgment you do you boo but right now after this peel your skin is at its most sensitive form so make sure that you're using an SPF SPF right after a peel at least for the first week because right now your skin is acceptable to sunspots sunburns all the bad things that can happen from the sun, your skin is, has a higher chance of getting those right now after your peel because your skin is, is just really sensitive right now. So just take care of your skin, wear an SPF. If you never wear it, just wear it the week after and then you can go back. But of course, SPF is the biggest anti-aging thing you can put on your face. It doesn't feel good, it doesn't smell good, it doesn't make you beautiful. So it's really hard to do that, but it's really important, it really is. I do these so often that I forget that they're still, they're still risky. Each peel that I do on myself is, is definitely something that I need to take more serious. Glycolic is great for anti-aging appeal, so it's getting off the top layer of skin. It's gonna help improve wrinkles, fine lines, dark spots, acne. It, it's a really good at-home peel, especially if you are a beginner. So let's go ahead and get started. 
First, I always, whenever I'm doing any kind of peel, I always wipe off all my excess oils with alcohol. And what this does is when you put on your, your acid, the glycolic, that it goes on evenly, that you don't have, you know, like your sweat glands right here, where it's like oily right here, but then dry here, that your peel will be uneven. So this just removes all the oil so you have a blank canvas. I hate this part, I hate alcohol. It dries out your face so much, and it smells and feels terrible, but definitely necessary. Oh, I hate this part. It just goes up in your sinuses. Ugh. It's a lot. All right, now that that is finally over with, I'm going to be using the Youthful Glow. That's what that looks like. I got it off of Amazon. It wasn't very much. Um, I've gone through like three quarters. I've used some of it. And I'm gonna put it just into a little soy sauce uh, container. So I'll dump that into there just to get that going. I am gonna wear gloves. All right, let's pour a little bit in here. You don't need a lot of this. Just a little shallow amount. So I have these really thin cotton pads. I swear I've had these forever, but they're just really thin. They don't absorb a lot of product and that's what you want. You don't want to use your really thick cotton rounds because it just absorbs way too much product. And so these little ones are a lot better. So the areas that I wanna focus on are around my eyes. Mind you, I am 45 years old. I am starting to see the wrinkles, fine lines. What's amazing though, is even though I'm 45, is that, I'm just gonna soak this and talk at the same time. You don't want it to drip. You want it to be wrung out so it's not dripping because you don't want to have a risk of it dripping or even uneven. You don't want like a bunch right here and then as it dries out, it's thin over here. You want it to go on as even as possible. So just make sure it's not dripping. Enough so it's wet, but not dripping. Um, so I'm 45 and you would think that I would stop breaking out. What? the heck <laughs> I thought that was one of the benefits you get the wrinkles but you don't get the pimples <laughs> but I have been getting I'm just gonna do a pretty generous layer on my face I don't do more than one I only do one layer and it starts to tingle right away just uh, re-soak your little pad as it dries out and just make sure it's not dripping I know I keep saying that but what was I saying? Oh, I've been getting Botox since I've been 30. And so I, I think that helped to not get a lot of fine lines. Like the Botox helps uh, like muscle memory and things like that. So wrinkle, defined wrinkles don't stay. And so I think that really helped. But also doing uh, treatments like this to get rid of that dead skin. It just, it gets rid of the dead skin and just uh, revitalizes the skin so you get that baby soft skin. Ooh, this is amazing, I feel this. I'm gonna do my chest. All right, that is the extent of the application itself. It goes on pretty easy. I do feel stinging and burning. I do have a few acne spots, so it's probably irritating those as well. And if this is your first time doing it, only leave it on for 30 seconds to a minute. See how it, how it goes. You can redo it in a week. So don't worry about that. You can always redo this one in a week, another week, another week. So your first go round, just go easy. Don't try to overdo it. It is a professional peel, so be careful. I poured way too much product in here. I have a ton in here. You only need a little bit. I, I always tend to add too much, and the problem is you can't dump it back into the bottle. It's just not a good idea. It's not sanitary. Uh, it could 
affect everything that's in the bottle. So you definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> it's just wasted product. Only use a little bit and you can always add more if you need it. So, so I do have just a bought neutralizer because with a glycolic peel you need a neutralizer and that just takes away the activation of the product and so they sell chemical peel neutralizers if you want to purchase it but you don't have to everybody at home has a baking soda and so you just mix baking soda and water and then you can make your own solution when you rinse off the chemical peel don't scrub <laughs> I hate physical exfoliants, so I may be the exception. It's typically after you rinse the peel off, you, you still feel it with the glycolic. Even though you're using the neutralizer, it just still has this residual activation going on. I had to rinse my, my face the last time a couple times, and I swear it was still like this burning. It made me a little bit nervous. I'm going to go ahead. It's been about three minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse this. I'm going to drip this on my face, make sure I have a towel ready to pat, and then rinse, and then of course splash with water, but you do not want to get it in your eyes. One, the peel can damage your eyes and baking soda in your eyes burns really, really bad. So have a towel ready to protect your eyes. So I'll be right back after that. I rinsed my face and that went really well. It does burn when you put the baking soda solution on your face. What I do is I, you know, dip, try to put it on my face in a clean way and then I soak my towel and then I pat it on, rinse, do another solution, pat it on, rinse, and uh, it's basically just rinse and repeat until it feels better. But you can see a little redness here, a little here. This is the area, the trouble areas that I'm having. I don't know why, it's a really odd area. I think it might be from like sunglasses or my glasses themselves, but it's just odd areas right here. But Anyways, um, right, I did down there. Um, I did stop using my retinols and vitamin C, my other anti-aging heavy duty treatments for my face. So I gave up those serums a week before. So to make sure that you don't do damage to your skin, you just really wanna make sure you don't use your Retin-A or, or Retinol products specifically those are a, a big one yeah it burned when i first put it on it feels good now um i put on this retinol serum that really does cool it down i'll link a different one down below i think this one's expensive and they don't sell it on amazon so i'll link one from amazon down below um it feels pretty good i turned on my light so hopefully you guys can see how it's looking it feels pretty good. I think that this brand to the 30% is definitely a lot more intense than the 50% that I had, which is interesting how two different brands and a high percentage difference, 30% versus 50%, how this 30% I really felt it. It could be something to do with my lifestyle as well. Have I been using my retinol products? more often since my 50%, which is very much likely. I've really tried to stay on top of my skincare routine, so I don't know, feels pretty good. I am going to check in tomorrow and give you guys an update on how it's looking. If anything happens um, between now and then, I'll definitely update. I have a 99% aloe vera that I'll apply if it's too burny. Um, and I don't use that like throughout or anything. I'll use it just like once to get rid of that intensity. But when you when it burns and you just want to get rid of that burning sensation, that does help. So yeah, this is what we're looking like. I think that brand is pretty darn good. I do like that one. But thank you. I'll be back. I'll see you then.
I have some peeling right here, but it really got these blemishes. Like you could barely even see that one. But there is some peeling going on, which is amazing. I didn't really think that was gonna happen. It's red, I need to put some lotion on. That's what it's looking like. Today is day two and my face is healing. I definitely got dark spots from the acne that I had, which is actually pretty extreme. This is new for me doing a peel. I think it's because I was using those, you know, those dots, you know, I was putting it over my acne spots and I think that those may have had some treatments in it. I really didn't think about it. You know, I'd given up my Retin-A and whatnot, but something to note. So this is definitely new for me. I'm gonna keep recording until, you know, do daily updates until these heal to see the outcome. Is there any scarring? I don't think there will be because I've been keeping it moisturized. And so I definitely had like a crumbly peel yesterday later in the day but today it is i just been really putting the marula oil on so it's not really that crumbly peel anymore around my nose sorry i'm getting way up in my nose but around my nose got a little um that area is really sensitive for me so that is still a little scabby like it'll heal it, i'm not worried about it but everything looks good i think the peel was pretty successful i'm just worried about these spots how dark they are because it just hasn't happened for me like that before but um yeah so i'll update you guys tomorrow we'll see how the progress goes stop the video here but I still have those little marks right there but honestly my acne lasts forever so I'm not gonna worry about it it will it will go away it's just I get a pimple it lasts forever so uh, it is healing it is getting better from the previous video that I showed so I think I'm gonna end it here I think it was pretty successful I'm ready for my next one so Thanks so much for watching. You guys have a great day. See you in my next one. Bye.